What's going on, y'all? You're tuning in to the highest rated, most listened to podcast to ever grace the airwaves, and you're a better person for listening to us. <laughs> All right, maybe not, but you're really going to enjoy it anyways. This is Made to Motivate Podcast, and we'll be talking social media hot topics, pop culture news, the greatest in movies and music, and all things sports. Make sure you're following us on social media at Made to Motivate Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can watch the show on our YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. And with that being said, let's get this show started. What is going on, y'all? This is your host, Ryan Weiss, Made to Motivate Podcast. I uh, got something a little bit different for you tonight. Um, it's just me by myself. Don't got the gents here. Um, just wanted to sit down and share some thoughts with you guys and kind of just have an open dialogue, I mean, with myself, um, but hoping that maybe it will strike up some conversation. So um, as most of the world is aware, um, there was another mass shooting um that took place um it was in texas i think the total death count is up to 20 at this point uh 18 children like second third fourth graders uh two teachers and then also the gunman an 18 year old uh was killed and he also shot and killed his grandmother um so as the story goes in this country and with mass shootings is the typical cycle, uh, mass shooting, social media outrage, media coverage, blah, blah, blah. We're going to talk to make all these changes and then back to normal. You know, we, we, we go through this cycle, nothing, nothing has changed. Um, you know, big mass shootings, I want to say, school shooting type things kicked off in the early 1998s. That's when we really saw it. I think Columbine is kind of the token school shooting um, that a lot of us look back on is when this trend started. Um, So 1998, it's now 2022. You know, these are still happening yearly. Kids are still dying. um, And nothing realistically has changed. Um, I got into a dialogue today um, regarding this. I had posted a listing of the hundreds of shootings that have happened um, since, um, you know, the Columbine shooting, you know, just a a list of all the school shootings that happened, whereas a school, a shooting that took place on school property where someone was killed or injured. This thing's been shared over 200 times, hundreds of comments. And the one trend that I see is divide. I feel like these types of things always create division um, within this country. Um, You've got your pro-gun people and you've got your anti-gun people, and they're always going to butt heads. You've got people that believe mental illness is a thing and people that don't believe mental illness is a thing, and they're going to butt heads. I don't understand how we can't come to agreements that people's lives are more important than any of these other matters. And how do we find the solution? I'm pro gun. I own firearms. I went through training to have a concealed carry license. I legally can carry a firearm concealed with me. I don't. And my, my owning of weapons is more of a home defense thing. You know, um, I, I want to be able to protect myself if someone were ever to enter my home um, unlawfully. I, I, I just, it's a thing to make myself feel safe. And a lot of people disagree with that. And that's fine. I'm honestly to the point now where I say, fuck the guns, take, take them. 18 children, 18 children were murdered in their school. What? That's, that's insane to me. 
if it comes down to children's lives and me not owning a gun, take the gun. You know, I don't think that needs to be the solution. I don't think taking away our right to carry a firearm has to be the solution. But if that's what it is, I do it. And the fact that I have seen people online arguing that their guns are more important to, 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 to them than saving lives because they're afraid that we're infringing on their rights, that we're taking away their right to bear arms. Look, owning a gun is your right, but it is a privilege. It should fall under certain circumstances. There should be rules and regulations in place for you to carry a firearm. You're carrying a deadly weapon, something that can take someone's life that should not be given out just freely. And obviously, the pro-gun people, biggest argument is gun laws don't solve crime. Gun laws don't protect people. Gun laws aren't going to stop gun violence. You know what? It might not stop it, but by all means, it can minimize it. It can slow it down. It can make it more difficult to get these. Statistically, gun laws do have a lower per capita death rate with gun violence. It's, it's just a study. It's factual data. The argument that it does not do anything is just out of the fear of losing their ability, ability to own a gun. I looked online today. I did research on my own. I pulled up numbers. Jesse Young, who's on the podcast with me, uh, he has wrote a fantastic gun law uh, idea and reform um, he's very knowledgeable. There's, there's data out there. Um, we pulled up a list of just states with gun laws and what the per capita death rate is. I'm just going to list just a couple. I just want to give some factual data. And it shows states with zero laws. States that don't have any major gun laws in place. Now we're talking the major gun laws, background checks, uh, red flags, uh, um, permit carrying, et cetera. There's, there's a number of like seven main gun laws that are the top ones that are put into place in most states. If a state has zero laws, it's 16.7 deaths per 100 individuals, 100,000 individuals, 16.7 deaths per 100,000 individuals. If the state implements one law, it drops from 16.75 to 15.6 deaths per 100,000 individuals. Okay. So it's taken into, a, into account the per capita, not just the state, because obviously some states are more populated than others. Two laws is 13.2 deaths. Three laws, 11.96 deaths. Four laws, 18.96. Five laws, 18.15. Six laws, currently there's not a state that has six laws in place, so that's irrelevant. Seven laws, 6.25. You go from zero to seven, you have overcut the deaths per capita in half. In half, you can't say that they do not work. These gun laws aren't taking away your guns. These are laws that are just making it more difficult to own a firearm, making it not as easy to get them, not getting them as quickly. Look, driving a car is your right. Everyone has the ability to get a license. You're allowed to have a driver's license. You don't just show up to the driver's bureau and say, I want a driver's license, and they give you an ID card and you start driving a vehicle. You have very strict rules in place for what it takes to drive a vehicle. You have to get your temporary permit. You have to take a test. You have to drive with your parents. You have to accumulate so many hours. You have to do training. Then you have to pass a written test. Then you have to pass your driver's test. Then at that point, you can get a driver's license. Then you're not allowed to drive with someone in your vehicle under a certain age for so long. You can't drive past certain times. It is difficult to get a driver's license, more difficult to get a driver's license than it is to own a firearm. That is a problem. A problem. Okay. I don't understand how we don't see that correlation. Why do we have such outrage every time this happens? And nothing changes. I don't get it. In Ohio, where I live, the governor just passed a law. 
that you can carry a concealed weapon starting in June 2022. You can, con you can carry a concealed weapon with no license. You, 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 you take a 13-hour course right now uh, and do some training and you get a concealed license. You're no longer going to need that. That's, that's minimal and bullshit anyways. I mean, I think the training is, is far too easy. I did it. I mean, I have my concealed carry license. You go and you sit in the classroom for a day. You learn about gun laws. You go to the shooting range. You do target practice. You pass the class. They issue you a permit. Now you can legally carry a gun concealed on your person out in public for, for a one-day course. One day? 13 hours. I think you have to get... 60 to 100 hours of driving time to get a license, okay? I'm not saying take the guns away. Make them harder to get. Universal background check should be standard in every state. It should be federally based. You should have to take so many hours of training. You should not be able to get a gun the same day, okay? I, I've gone in because I have my concealed carry license. So since I took that course, now it is easier for me to go in and get a gun. I can get it within an hour. Go in, show them my concealed carry license. They do a quick check, and I, I own a gun. That's crazy to me. Background checks are, are one of the many things that need to happen. That's not going to be the say-all, be-all, because background checks check criminal records. Sure, great. Mental health, if you don't have any record of it, if you've never seen a doctor or anything because of your mental health, it's not going to throw any red flags. You know, not one item is going to, I mean, the list I mentioned, zero to seven, the more you got, the lower the deaths come. Make it harder. Have a waiting period. Uh, if, you, if you do private gun purchase, you don't, it doesn't require a background check. It doesn't require anything. I mean, the transferring of firearms, they need to implement something where if you as the gun owner transfer this to someone else, you're responsible. We need to make this a more serious matter. In the states where they have harder laws to get the guns, where it's more strict, it is also stated that there's less gun ownership because it's harder to get them. People don't want to go through it. You can get it still. You still aren't taking away that right. It's just harder to get the gun. It has lesser guns out there. The per capita death rate is lower. The, the data is there. Gun laws work. Okay? Yes. Criminals are going to get guns regardless. They're going to buy them off the street. We know that. But if there's less circulating because they're harder to get, if we make the gun owners more responsible for their weapons, statistically, it has to make a difference, okay? It has to. Mental health is a whole other option, or a whole other uh, issue, not option, issue. We don't want to talk about mental health crisis in this country. We're like embarrassed of it. People are embarrassed to talk about that they have mental health issues. That, that's numerous amounts of things, okay? That, that people want to say, well, not everyone's the same. I get that, okay? Kids are bullied, you know, uh, have rough upbringings, you know, are abused at home. All of these, this, these repeated behaviors trigger things in the mind. You know, they create instability. They create um, isolation and anger. You know, um, they, these, these people turn, tend to shut themselves off from other people, you know, the rage and, and stuff builds up inside until they snap. You know, if you're bullied and bullied and bullied and bullied all over and over again, you're eventually going to snap. Okay. And you're either going to beat up your bully. You might shoot your bully. Something's going to happen. You eventually are going to hit a breaking point. And that's something that we as, as individuals or as those that are parents need to be involved with their children, okay? Bullying is a big deal. Bullying is a problem. The, the, the kid from uh, Texas that committed the shooting, it was noted that he was bullied. The kids made fun of him. They gave him a hard time because uh, they didn't have money because of the way he dressed, okay? It's not an excuse that what he did is all right. But, but the, this, this kid didn't just wake up one day and decide he was going to go shoot up the school, okay? 
there was mental health issues there, whatever you want to call it, use whatever terminology you want. He was not fully stable. A mentally sound person does not go and shoot up a school or a church or a grocery store or their work or a movie theater. You're not mentally sound if you do that. There is something wrong. Okay. The access that we have to mental health options is sad. The wait times, you're, you can wait six months to a year just to get in to see someone, to discuss you, the concerns that you're having, the, the thoughts that you're having, you know, whether that might be suicidal or that you're going to hurt someone else. Why are these things not more accessible? Why are we not talking about them more? Why do people feel like they cannot have these conversations? My, my Facebook feed today alone with the comments being made, I mean, if I had mental health issues, I wouldn't want to talk about it. Because people are out here just making you feel bad and blasting you for it and saying it's not a real thing. Why are we divided? Why are we not coming together on this? I can't imagine that not anyone wants this to not happen again. Okay, so when do we put ourselves second in our rights and our wanting to own a gun aside and say, you know what, all these people that are dying because of gun violence is more important. How do we make that happen? Um, uh, arguments were that um, in, in enacting or asking local authority, you know, lo local government to help you um, isn't going to do anything. You know, there was a lot of discussion on my post about these things don't work, but not any talk about what does. Um, I commented, tagged um, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine. They said, you know, what are you doing in Ohio, where I live, to prevent these things from happening again? You know, what are you doing at my local level that I know that my friends who have children or my friends that are teachers uh, don't have to fear that someone's going to come to the school and shoot them up? You know, what are we doing at my level? This isn't solve it as a country. But I want, but that's where I, I made a comment about that. I just said, you know, what are you doing to prevent this from happening in Ohio? And people were saying, why are you asking him? He can't do anything. Because that's our local official. It's a starting point. The fact that we are so ready and set to just argue rather than find solution is the problem. I'm just offering suggestions. Let's ask our local government officials to step up and get themselves involved, which in turn can get the federal government involved to make a change. Doing nothing is not working. This cycle of outrage and then back to normalcy is not working. We need to do something. Having the conversation is great. It's not actionable. It's, it's not changing anything. We're sharing our outrage. We're being social media advocates, and then we're going about our day. This school shooting in Texas, we'll, we'll, we won't be talking about it in two weeks. It, something else will come up, and we'll move on from it, just like every other time, until another one happens. Buffalo happened with the grocery store. We talked about it on the podcast, talked about this same conversation. What are we doing? How do we fix this? How do we end hate crimes? 10 days go by, and here we are with Texas. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy to me. And it doesn't, it doesn't seem that anything's being done at a federal level, at, a, at, our, at our government's level. I don't know if they care, honestly, um, because with this going on for as long as it has, it almost seems like, they don't want it to be fixed. I mean, how do we go on this long with no change? You know, Steve Kerr um, from the Golden State Warriors, I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm not great with sports. But Steve Kerr um, posted a video after their game or their warm-ups, and, and, and he talked about the shooting in Texas um, and his outrage, and he was in tears, and he was upset, and he said, you know, this has got to stop. This has got to change. And you know what? I applaud him um, for using that press conference in that time to discuss this. I think those sorts of things need to happen, but it's not enough. Um, 
me as a small guy, you know, I'm just going to say a, a, a nobody per se. Uh, my voice isn't heard. You know, I can share all the outrage I want on Facebook um, or in the government, uh, tagging the, the mayor, even writing the governor or whatever, but I don't matter. Uh, the, the, the people at the top, you know, are, are politicians, our are athletes, our musicians, our actors and actresses, uh, the wealthy. These are the people who have a voice. Um, and Steve Kerr saying something is great. And I hope that others follow suit. Um, you know, we need to, we need to have more of that happening at the level where it, it is seen and heard and it impacts people and it makes things inconvenient. Uh, sit at sit out basketball games, you know, uh, kneel, wear the actionable T-shirts that call attention to it, you know, just like that, like what's happening with Black Lives Matter. You know, players were sitting out, p- players were kneeling, games weren't happening. Uh, you know, the players were wearing shirts with slogans on them. This is being broadcast worldwide. You know, people are seeing it. It's being talked about. It forces the government to listen. Uh, there's been minimal political discussion around what happened in Texas. Bullshit, blatant publicity statements about, oh, we're so sorry, and our thoughts are with the people in Texas, you know, from the president, uh, from our mayor in Akron, from the governor, uh, Mike DeWine. Um, But there's been minimal talk about any sort of change. We've become immune to the conversation we've become immune to this um outside of those immediately affected in texas um the families the parents um and, and parents uh, across the country have shown the most outrage obviously fear of sending their kids to school uh wanting to be homeschooled now um that's an issue you know school is supposed to be the safe place kids should go there and have a good time and get an education and be able to come home at night. Uh, schools should not be war zones. Um, and there's lots of things that currently are being done. There's things that could be done better. Um, but it's not a one size fits all situation. Okay. Um, having harder access to schools should be a thing. You know, you should not be able to walk into a school, any school in this country at any point of the day without access being granted to you. And I'm sure this happens in some schools, but it doesn't happen in all. It, you know, uh, there should be guards, you know, whether that's police, security guards, uh, off-duty police officers, whatever you want to call them. I don't care. There should be some kind of officer, armed officer at schools that have to grant you access into the building one that's watching cameras and patrolling the hallways. Um, People want to say guns don't belong in schools. I agree. Honestly, we shouldn't be at this point. We should not need to have armed guards in our schools. But you know what? We're past the point of inconvenience. We're past the point of we shouldn't need to have guns in schools. You know, we shouldn't. But the fact is we need to because what we're doing currently is not working. Okay? Locked doors. No access to the building without someone letting you in from a main entrance. End of story. It should happen. Armed guards, one or two, police officer, security guard, ex-military, whatever you want to call them. I don't care. Armed individuals in the building who patrol and are in charge of access to and from the building. It should be a standard. Metal detector, sure, maybe. Um, I think there's other routes that you could go. I think that if you did something by limiting what comes in and out of the building might be even better um, and efficient to having everyone go through a metal detector. Obviously, kids have things in book bags that are going to set off a metal detector, um, so that might take forever. But why not not have backpacks to come, to come to and from school? Maybe only once a week you bring your book bag home, and that day it takes a little longer to go through the metal detector. But the other days, you have a folder that you bring home, whatever you need for your homework. Okay, we have to adapt. We have to be willing to make the change if we want these things to stop. So make the access to things coming in and out of the school harder. 
you know, for the students that are bringing guns into the school and then doing the shooting. Obviously, like this gentleman in Texas who like didn't go there and, and broke in and, and shot people up. That's a different scenario. Um, I am under the impression that there was armed police officer there or guard there. Um, and that did nothing, obviously. Uh, from what I understand is they knew he was on property and they went out to um, confront him and he shot them. Uh, they didn't die, I don't believe, thankfully, um, but he shot them, okay? So it, this isn't just put an armed person in the school. I mean, they need to be trained. I, I've seen several people, my brother included, mentioned um, veterans, you know, ex-military, someone who's been in combat, someone that understands this, that's not gonna be in fear of wanting to retreat in the situation, you know? One, I think that's great for ex-military. Them finding jobs is very hard as it is. I know there's going to be argument about putting a military person in a school. That's fine. We can have that conversation, but I'm looking for solutions, okay? So you put a veteran in this position, an armed veteran that, that has training, that understands the circumstance, who's not going to run in fear of someone shows up with a firearm, okay? Do I want guns in schools? No. Do I want every teacher to have to be armed? No. Would we rather have someone in the school and maybe it prevents some people from doing this because of the fear of knowing that there's an armed person there? Sure. It's not going to solve every single one, but if we cut it by 40%, I think that's great. If we cut it by 25%, isn't that a, isn't that a start? Aren't these little things better than nothing? Why is there an argument against that? Um, if your argument is that you don't want to have your kids to be around guns or you don't want your kids seeing a security guard in your school carrying a gun, what safety measure do you want? Because we're not stopping people from showing up. Have something in place, some form of defense. Uh, making classrooms barricadable, obviously. You know, um, I know there's things in place where there's like things you put under the door that prevent them from being open. Um, there needs to be some kind of alert system, some kind of network. This kid in Texas had posted on his Facebook, he was going to shoot his grandma, that he shot his grandma, and then next he was going to shoot up the school. Uh, this was with like 30 minutes before this happened. Uh, you can't tell me that not someone, someone didn't see this post and think that they should say something. 30 minutes is a lot of time. I mean, you call a school principal and say, hey, locked down. There's been a threat. I don't know what happened. I don't want to hypothesize, but we need to be more actionable. Uh, we need to have things. We need to be more willing to implement something to help affect change. The obvious easy solution is just ban guns altogether. Take everyone's guns. Okay. Let's say you do that. Sure. It might, it, it, obviously it's probably going to slow this from happening. Is it realistic? I don't know. Okay. I want to think of realistic things that you can implement right now because deciding that you're going to take every single American's firearm is going to take forever. You have to pass a law. I mean, you have to in, in, initiate a law. It's got to go through the process. You have to be then able to enforce it. You have to have someone that's going to go door to door and collect firearms. You have to have people that are going to be willing to do that. Um, you know, cause the people you're going to be asking to collect these firearms are probably gun owners themselves and probably aren't going to be thrilled about it. I don't think that that's a realistic solution. I'm not saying that I'm against it, but we need to think realistic. I don't think that realistically happens. So we have to eliminate the thing of we're going to get rid of every, every gun. Okay. Maybe someday, but it's not happening tomorrow. What can we implement tomorrow to make the change? Okay. Security guards in schools pay them a salary, two, two guards per school, federally fund it. Look, we, we, we spend millions and millions and millions of dollars in aid to help other countries. You're telling me we can't do it here? We sent 40 billion or 40 million or some dollars to Ukraine to help them fight their own war? And we can't do that here? I'm all for humane acts. I'm all for helping other countries. I'm all for helping people in need. But we are broken. Our country is broken. And if we don't fix ourselves, how do we help other people? 
we have so many crises in this country between race and police brutality and mass shootings, gun violence, mental health issues. We need to invest time and money and effort here, here in our own four walls. Okay. More access to people with mental health problems, more conversations around it, making people feel okay to have the conversation. You know, men, especially, I, I'm not taking away from anyone else, but men, especially, have always been geared to keep their feelings inside, to be the man, to be tough. You know, that we're not allowed to be emotional. We're not allowed to, to have these types of concerns. You know, that, that's how we've been brought up. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. We should all feel okay having the hard conversations. We've talked about it on this podcast time and time again. I'm very passionate about it. I believe the conversations need to happen. Access should be easier to get to. Okay. I don't know what that means as far as cost, but we need to be able to have the ability to talk to someone, whether it be at the school, you know, for kids. Um, as our employers, maybe our employers offer something to us as employees, um, not just in times of crisis. Obviously, at the school right now, there's things being available to these children and, and parents and teachers because this happened, you know, um, or if something like this happens at your work, all of a sudden there's access available to you to talk to someone. This should be available all the time, okay? And it should be encouraged to have these conversations. We also need to address problems at home, okay? Parent, I, I get flack because I'm not a parent, but you know what? Parents need to be responsible for their children's actions. You need to know what's going on in your child's life, okay? You know what they're doing on social media. You need to monitor these things. Check in with them. Look at their Facebook. Invade their privacy. You know what? It is what it is. It's part of being a parent. Tough love, okay? There should be knowledge that your kid is so unhappy that they're going to school and shooting up their other kids. Okay. There's no way that there's no signs, whether that be they they're in the room all the time by themselves, uh, you know, or in their emotions, you can tell when someone is unhappy, sit down with them, you know, make sure that they feel love, make sure that they know you are there for them. Parents need to be responsible or their kids, okay? You need to know what's going on. You need to be more responsible if you own a gun in your home. Is it locked up? You know, do you know how to safely operate it? Does your kid know where it is? Do they know how to safely use it if you're allowing them access to the gun? We have to be responsible for ourselves, for our actions, for our peers. Doing nothing is not working. It's not working anymore. This conversation is old. I'm not even directly personally affected by this. Okay. I haven't had someone close to me harmed by gun violence. I can't imagine that turmoil. I can't imagine how those parents felt that day when they were waiting at the safe zone, whatever it's called for their child, and they didn't show up. Families destroyed, generations that will never be the same again. Parents who I don't know how they move forward. Teachers afraid to go to work now. Parents that don't want to send their kids to school now. I cannot imagine that. It's just gut-wrenching to think about. Losing a family member to anything, nonetheless, something like that. Okay. I know my voice doesn't touch many lives, doesn't enter many ears, doesn't hold much value or weight. But what I do know is that I am upset and sick and tired of these conversations. I'm sad that we live in a world where so many people choose hate. Especially so many people that choose hate and want to divide when these sorts of things happen. Okay. I had a guy today post on my page 
a local business owner on the list, hide that shit. Make your page private, bro. If you're going to blast people with this sort of thing online, because it's very damaging to your image. And I will never, never support this business ever. Um, but this dude made a post that said, I love all the uh, gun law advocates complaining online because it helps me weed out my friends list. Um, stop being a Karen. Uh, taking away guns isn't going to help you when you get carjacked or something. The only way to fight gun, a gun holder is a gun in yourself, holding a gun yourself. Um, cool, whatever. I'm okay with people that are pro gun. I, I, I'm not against that, but he went on to basically make a point that it, he, he cared more about his guns than the fact that these, these lives of children were lost. Um, and that the only way to combat that was to have a gun. Okay. What gun are you putting in a six-year-old's hands? If the only way to stop gun violence is with a gun. Tell me, how are we arming second, third, and fourth graders? If, if they need to protect themselves while they're at school or if me as a parent, if, if I'm a parent and I'm a gun owner and I have one at home to protect us and I'm not with them at school, that means you did kid needs to have a gun to protect themselves. Is that what we're saying here? Arm all the teachers. Teachers are there to teach our children. They're not there to be soldiers. Okay. A teacher in the moment of a gun shooting, their concern is going to be barricading the room, protecting their children, not trying to uh, aim down a hallway filled with their peers to shoot someone that's, that's there. No. Arming teachers isn't the solution. Okay. I am for having an armed security guard, an armed trained person whose sole responsibility is the safety of the people within the building. That's their focus. Not a teacher trying to teach their class and now has to just stumble for their gun and figure out how to protect a room for, filled with kids. No, okay. Trained professionals with a firearm in the building. Um, granted, again, like I said, we, we shouldn't need to have that. But what will we do? We do at this point. We need to have something. Something is better than nothing. I get the conversation of we're past. Let's start somewhere. Let's let's have this. We let's have the solution. It doesn't happen overnight. Yes, it's been far too long. Yes, this should have been solved many years ago, but it hasn't. Okay, it hasn't. But we have to get past it. We need to move forward. Look forward and find solutions and act on those solutions and not move on a week from now. Not give up hope. Not let the people in power push us away. Not be silent, not sit back. We need to stand up with a unified voice, with actionable causes, and we need to keep pushing until something changes. We need to force the hand of those who have the ability to enact change. Whether that's your local mayor, your governor, your councilman, the president, okay? We're not getting to the president. And this isn't Republican, Democratic. I don't want to hear that bullshit. Don't even comment it on my page. I will delete it. I don't care if you're pro-Chump, pro-Biden, pro-elephant, pro-donkey. I don't fucking care. Okay? Gun violence happens under every president. A school shooting happens under every president. It's not Republican and Democrat. Okay? It's children's lives. It's your friends' and family's lives. Cut the bullshit with what political party you're on, okay? And let's come to terms with the fact that we need change and that nothing is working the way it has been done for the last 20 years as the school shootings show. The list is insane. I mean, if I, I, could, I can read 
this list to you. Um, of the schools. Um, it's long. Okay. And I know there's some that are missed because sadly, um, there's so many that it's hard to keep track. You know, it's not out of intentional forgetfulness. It's not because people don't remember. It's there's honestly so many at this point that it's hard to keep track of them all. This list is long, um, but for sake of argument and for the time it's going to take me to read them, I want you to think about that each one of these had one or more casualties, whether that be a child, a student, a teacher, a faculty member. These are lives, okay? From May 1998 up until the shooting in Texas, Thurston High School, Columbine High School, Heritage High School, Deming Middle School, Fort Gibson Middle School, Buell Elementary School, Lake Worth Middle School, University of Arkansas, Junpero Serra High School, Santana High School, Bishop Newman High School, Pacific Lutheran University, Granite Hills High School, Lou Wallace High School, Martin Luther King Jr. High School, Appalachian School of Law, Washington High School, Conception Abbey, Benjamin Tasker Middle School, University of Arizona, Lincoln High School, Lincoln McD John McDonough High School, Red Lion Area Junior High School, Case Western Reserve University, Ricori High School, Balau High School, Randallston High School, Bowen High School, Red Lake Senior High School, Harlan Community Academy High School, Campbell County High School, Milwee Middle School, Roseburg High School, Pine Middle School, Essex Elementary School, Duquesne University, Platte Canyon High School, Weston High School, West Nickel Mines School, Joplin Memorial Middle School, Henry Foss High School, Compton Centennial High School, Virginia Tech, Success Tech Academy, Miami Carroll City Senior High School, Hamilton High School, Louisiana Technical College, Mitchell High School, E.O. Green Junior High School, Northern Illinois University, Lakota Middle School, Knoxville Central High School, Willoughby South High School, Henry Ford High School, University of Central Arkansas, Dillard High School, Dunbar High School, Hampton University, Harvard College, La Rose Cutoff Middle School, International Studies Academy, Skyline College, Discovery Middle School, University of Alabama, DeKalb School, Deer Creek Middle School, Ohio State University, Mumford High School, University of Texas, Kelly Elementary School, Marinette High School, Aurora Central High School, Millard South High School, Martinsville West Middle School, Worthing High School, Highlands Intermediate School, Cape Fear High School, Chardon High School, Apostle School of Jacksonville, Oikos University, Perry Hall School, Normal Community High School, University of South Alabama, Banner Academy South, University of Southern California, Sandy Hook Elementary School, Apostolic Revival Center Christian School, Taft Union High School, Osborne High School, Stevens Institute of Business and Arts, 
Hazard Community and Technical College, Chicago State University, Lone Star College North, Cesar Chavez High School, Price Middle School, University of Central Florida, New River Community College, Grambling State University, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Osiwar Mitchell Middle School, Ronald E. McNair Discovery Academy, North Panola High School, Carver High School, Gape Christian Academy, Sparks Middle School, North Carolina A&T State University, Stevenson High School, Rashir High School, West Orange High School, Arapaho High School, Edison High School, Liberty Technology Magnet High School, Hill House High School, Berendo Middle School, Purdue University, South Carolina State University, Los Angeles Valley College, Charles F. Brush High School, George Regents University, Academy of Knowledge Preschool, Benjamin Benneker High School, D.H. Conley High School, East English Village Preparatory Academy, Payne College, George Gwinnett College, John F. Kennedy High School, Seattle Pacific University, Indiana State University, Albemarle High School, Fern Creek Traditional High School, Langston Hughes High School, Marysville Pilchuck High School, Florida State, Miami Carroll, Rogers State, Rosemary Anderson, Wisconsin Lutheran, Buthane Cookman University, Pershing Elementary School, Wayne Community College, Savannah State University, Harrisburg High School, and Pequa Community College, Northern Arizona University, Texas Southern University, Tennessee State University, Winston-Salem State University, Mojave High School, Franklin High School, Muskegon Heights High School, Independence High School, Madison High School, Antigo High School, Jermaine Burke High School, Townville Elementary, Vigor High High School, Lyndon McKinley STEM Academy, June Jordan High School for Equity, Mueller Park Junior High School, West Liberty Salem High School, King City High School, North Park Elementary, North Lake College, Freeman High School, Mattoon High School, Rancho Tehama Elementary School, Wake Forest University, Italy High School, Net Charter High School, Marshall County High School, Sal Castro Middle School, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, Central Michigan University, Dixon High School, Santa Fe High School, Noblesville West Middle School, STEM School Highlands Ranch, Palm Beach Central High School, Providence Center and Technical Academy, Fairley High School, Canyon Springs, Dennis Immediate, Florida International, Central Elementary, Cascade Middle School, Prairie View A&M, Alta Skoda High School, Robert E. Lee High School, Holmes County, Michigan, a school bus, UNC Charlotte, Riverview, Florida, Second Chance High School, Carmen Ainsworth High School, Willow Elementary School, Monroe Clark Middle School, Jeanette High School, De Anza High School, Reginald F. Lewis High School, Sangus High School, Wakus, Wakusha South High School, Oshkosh High School, Catholic Academy of New Haven, Bel Air High School, North Crowley High School, McAuliffe Elementary School, South Oak Cliff High School, Sonora High School, Western Illinois University, Oxford High School, and Robb Elementary. Um, a lot of high schools obviously listed on there. This, this is children. Um, these are high school kids. These are 17, 18 or on, younger kids that are going to school and shooting up their friends or their bullies, other students, peers, teachers. Um, that's a pattern, okay? There's something going on there. These kids are being bullied. They have unstable house lives. Something is going on that they feel they need to go to school and shoot up other children. Accountability, accountability, accountability. Parents, accountability, accountability in the classroom, uh, counseling at the schools. 
I'm not, I'm not placing blame. I'm not, okay? I'm not saying that teachers or parents are, are, are to blame for these situations, but we need to be better accountable, okay? We need to be more involved. We need to understand what's going on in our students' lives, in our children's lives, what's going on in our classrooms. We need better support systems for our teachers, okay? That's a lot of schools, high schools, middle schools, where children are entering with guns, okay? School shootings don't happen with adults for the most part. I'm sure there's a case here or there. I, I don't know all the statistics, but school shootings are done by children, okay? We need to make guns harder to obtain. They need to be locked up at our houses. Kids cannot be just getting school, get guns and showing up at school with them. We got to do better. We need to be willing to at least have the conversation and consideration about stricter gun laws. Stop fighting about it. Stop bringing politics into it. Stop being so concerned that your whatever amendment right is being infringed upon. Have your gun. Own your gun. Make them more difficult to obtain. Make training mandatory. Make it classroom training. Make there be uh, gun range courses you have to go to. Make it more difficult to have, okay? Don't take them away. I'm not saying take them away. I'm not saying don't. I don't, that I don't care about. Honestly, at this point, if we had to take the guns away, take them away. But there's other options available to start that can happen more quickly than just saying guns need to be all confiscated. Actionable items that we can start implementing quickly. Okay? Training at schools, security guards in schools, stricter gun laws more funding access discussion around mental health for all ages being accountable parents having tough conversations with your children knowing what's going on in their lives not putting them in front of an ipad or a computer to distract them you know have uh, security alerts on their phones block things from being able to be accessed as easily, monitor what they're posting online, check their text messages every once in a while, you know? Tough love. Parents are meant to be parents. They're not meant to be your friend, okay? I know that's hard. I get it. I do. But I think everyone needs to be willing to make sacrifices in Inconvenience needs, it just needs to happen. We're past, we're past it. We're past the point of where we're, we're too concerned about inconvenience or this stuff taking too much work. Laziness isn't an option anymore. Change needs to happen. Open for discussion, uh, open to have guests on the podcast to discuss this. Please, if you comment on this, friendly, debates. I'm all about dialogue, but not attacking each other. I refuse it. I will delete the comment. I'll block the comment, whatever it is, no attacking one another. If you're coming on the page to simply be one-sided and you're setting your ways and you're not open to discussion and you just want to spew hate or whatever it is, please don't. Just not on my page. Use your own Facebook for that. Um, I want open dialogue or options that are available, options that we can actually put into place, actionable change, and how we're going to do it, okay? How do we get our government officials to actually step up? How do we make our voices heard? Who do we get involved for the change? You know what? We got to protest. We protest. I, I was part of several Black Lives Matter walks, rallies, whatever you want to call them. I was all about doing something. We can do that for the gun stuff. I, I haven't seen anybody out or discussing it. I'm all about going downtown 
um, and, and having dialogue or conversation, mailing letters to our state authorities, to the federal government, whatever it is, let's do something. Okay. Um, comment, please like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, you know, um, sometimes these conversations need to be had. I know I don't have all the answers. I know I rambled for a long time. I probably repeated myself, but it's just a conversation I feel like we need to have and we need to be willing to have, and we need to take the time out of our lives to talk about these things that make uh, a difference or how to make a difference. Um, if you listened, cool. I appreciate it. Um, we'll have another podcast regular episode for you soon. Um, that's all for now. Thanks for tuning in y'all. That is made to motivate podcast. Make sure you tune into the show every week, like share, subscribe, hit the bell on YouTube. So you know, when the new videos launch and check out our pages individually, if you can, we appreciate the support at Jesse Unk SI on Twitter, Chris, the film freak Kessinger, check out the film freak review page on Facebook. And I am Ryan Weiss. You can check out rock everywhere, inc.etsy.com to follow my art and apparel page. We appreciate the support and, of course, at Made to Motivate Podcast on all social media sites. Thanks again, and we'll check you next week.